Howdy everyone, I am here with a little craft that I want to show you. It's, a, it's just a quick sewing craft, it's nothing very difficult. If you know how to use a sewing machine, or even if you know how to sew by hand, then you should be able to do this, and you probably already know how to do this, but it's just a quick little idea. I found this, um, this is a, a microfiber cloth. And I found this at the Dollar Tree, so it was only a dollar for this uh, cloth, and it's very soft. I was there looking for uh, like a chamois to uh, wipe my car with after I've taken it to the car wash, and I saw this, and um, came home, and I thought about it, and I decided to go back and get this. It's a really nice plush little uh, fabric, and I've been wanting to make some uh, cushions for my couch, and I wanted to do something, you know, in faux feather faux feather, faux fur, but um, I hadn't gotten around to it and I could probably just buy one already made because, you know, sometimes you can get some, you know, like at Ross or Marshalls or so forth, like really cheap. <clears throat> but I have a lot of fabrics at home, so I said, you know what, I'm going to make something with what I've already got. And these were only a dollar. And as you can see, they're pretty big sheets. Let's see. Let me measure it so I can tell you how big it is. It's at least 24. Yeah, 24. By 16 so it's a big piece of fabric for a dollar and it's plush on both sides it's obviously uh, for they have a car in the picture so it's obviously soft enough that it won't scratch you know like the surface of your pan your car things like that so uh, I thought it was a great buy for a dollar and I do have these these cushions here that uh, are kind of worn and the fabric doesn't look so great so I'm just going to cover these already made uh, cushions so I don't have to buy any filling for them. Now, I want to make two of these and obviously one of these is not enough to cover, you know, one. So I've gotten two of these cloths. So there we go. I've spent two dollars and I happen to have some fabric already at home. I have this fabric. It doesn't really matter what fabric you use. You can use uh, some old pillowcases, some sheets, or maybe even cut this open and then use some of this for the back and then use your new front okay so I had this this was a, actually a couple of curtains that I have that I'm no longer using but I saved them because the fabric is really nice it's really pretty and I'm going to use this on the other side of this uh, these two cushions and I've got two of them so I know I have enough fabric so that's all I need to know is that I have enough fabric to cover these two the next thing I want to do is I want to measure across, and I need to get my measuring tape, so just one minute, because I didn't grab that. Grab my measuring tape. Okay, I've got my measuring tape, and what I want to do is I want to measure all the way across, and because I'm covering the whole cushion, including this little trim that's on the edge, I mean, I could cut it off, but I really, I really don't want to do that, because I'm going to be doing this the lazy way. Okay, so basically, I'm going to measure, and I can already see that this is like a 17 and a half, okay? But I need another half inch so that I could have quarter inch on each side for um, the seam. Now, if you recall, this was only 16 inches, okay? It wasn't... It was not enough to be said. Now, it was 24 on one side, but of course, I'm going to have the same dilemma on the other side anyway. So, obviously, these cushions are going to be a little wide for this. But you know what? I'm putting this on top of here. And look at that. I've got enough fabric. I've got enough fabric. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut these in a square so that whatever this width is, is what I'm going to cut this way. And I'm going to make uh, cut this, this, and this. So I'll have four pieces, two of each cut to the width of this particular. Let me measure it again. Oh, well, maybe I measured it wrong. It's actually, <coughs> excuse me, 18 inches. And this is 17 and a half plus a half an inch more. <coughs> excuse me, I'm sick. 17 and a half <coughs> plus a half an inch more makes it 18 inches. So, well... Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I want to cut this, this side going this way, 18 inches. So that's the only cutting I'm going to do on these two little cloths. So let's get to do that. All right. Let's move some things out of the way so they don't get cut. And I'm going to measure 18 inches on my grid here. Yeah, that's 18 inches. I just need it. It's just, 
it has a little bit of a stretch and it kind of pulls back because I think because of this this little hem they put on there it kind of pulls it to pulls it in but really it has some stretch so it, it does measure 18 inches so what I want to do is I want to make sure that when I do that I also do some pulling over here so I want to make sure that that's straight over here and I've hit 18 right here now you may not have a grid to do this uh, so you're probably thinking well what do I do uh, <coughs> what you can do is if you have some uh, scrap pieces of uh, newspaper or some you know how sometimes in the store they wrap up your your breakable items in this like a craft uh, paper that's like newspaper but without the print just that plain paper I save those I use this a lot to put paint on them when I'm painting or to cut out patterns that would be great to put on the table tape it down and then measure and mark make your markings on it so you kind of make yourself your own little grid okay so if you don't have one of these you can easily do that you can use a ruler mark off your inches this way mark off your inches that way and so forth on that paper and then make some lines this way and that way to create yourself a little grid <clears throat> Now you don't really have to do that. You can always just use your measuring tape and use some pins and mark, 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 mark. But I'm going to do that for this. And I'm going to go actually at just a tad over the 18. And the only reason that I'm doing that is because um, I'm not really stretching it. There we go. I'm just going to go a tad bit over. And I'm using this grid on this side. It's 0 to 18 inches right here. Here's my nice rotary cutter. I'm going to go a tad bigger because I may be going a little bit crooked. So I'm just going about a quarter inch bigger. Look, did I have this open? Yes, I did. I need to cut it. Oh, I don't know why I thought I wasn't cutting. Anyway, this little scrap of paper, of oh, paper, this little scrap of fabric is actually nice for another little project so I'm going to save that I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> cut the other one to the same size and as well as I'm going to do two of this one as well and I'll be back okay before I continue there's a little something that I came across is when I open this second piece of the, the uh, towel I realized that it is not as wide as this one now <coughs> excuse me it is about the same length but it's not the same width it's about two inches shy of what this this one is so I guess you're gonna want to pay attention when you buy them to kind of you're not gonna be able to remove this this is folded up you know like so and this is on here like that okay so you obviously can not open it to to measure you know because this is on there, you're not going to want to open this in the store, that's not right. What you just do is just open the, the bottom part, because you'll be able to do that, and measure it against the bottom of another one, and make sure that you're getting both the same width, because obviously, these are obviously like little bits of remnant fabrics, obviously, and they're not promising you really a size. It says 16 by 24. Yeah, the other one says 16 by 24, and I am getting 16 inches. I just got a little bit extra on this one, and that's not a, the only reason that I'm pointing that out is because I want you to know that if that does happen to you, just you're just going to have to make your other little cushion a little bit snugger. Now, if you need to have everything be exactly the same, then do what I told you. Make sure they're the same size by opening at the bottom part and measuring against them. Okay, anyway, <coughs> or actually when they're hanging, they're hanging and the length is actually the shorter one, so you just want to make sure that they're, the length is the same this way rather than what it opens up into because what it opens up into is going to be more than the than the length and the, and the length is really when it's hanging on the on the little board is really going to tell you how you know what it's going to be able to cover okay so this is folded like that let me make that really clear this is kind of a boring thing in the video i'm really sorry but i want to point this out <laughs> For some of you who don't understand, but those of you who do, please give me a little bit of a break here. I just want to explain. When it's hanging off the cardboard like this, the same with the other one, they're hanging off the cardboard, 
it says 16 by 24 and yeah you're getting 24 inches like that but this is the obvious 16 inch length so what you want to do is you just want to hold them because this was sticking out a little bit you just want to hold them like that put them flat in a little area there in the store put them on the floor in your shopping cart whatever and then just hold them like that and as you can see well this is the wrong part let me do let me do it like how was it like this <coughs> what you want to do is just look for where the little tip is in here put that against the edge over here and then compare them and as you can see this one was longer hanging which I didn't even notice and I should have all I saw was the 16 by 24 I kind of looked at it I didn't really pay attention I thought nah, this is enough I just eyeballed it really and, and thought this is going to be enough so 16 by 24 is something I completely forgot about, but I do know that I remember looking at that, and um, that was it. But um, I didn't look at all of them, but I'm um, looking at the tags, and obviously they're all the same. But you're, they're, you're actually getting a little bit more on this one. You're getting uh, at least 18 inches by 24. So that's the only thing you want to do is just look at them and find two that are the same, and you probably want to pick whatever is longer than shorter. Okay. Back to business, I'm going to go ahead and cut these at whatever size I can and just make the second cushion just a little bit smaller. All right, I've cut my four pieces and the next thing I want to do now is I want to take um, one of the, uh, the furry, fuzzy side and one of the, uh, of the other fabric that I had <clears throat> and uh, decide which is the right side for each one and I believe this is the right side for this one. So I'm putting that facing upward, and then I'm going to decide the right side for this. And really, basically, this has no right side. It's the same. But <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide based on the softness. This feels good, and this feels good. But you know what? This one seems to feel a little bit fluffier and softer to me. So I'm going to decide that that's my right side. So the right side is the side you pick. How's that? Does that help? Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew these on the sewing machine, just a straight stitch, like I said, quarter inch on the side seams. But I'm going to leave one side open. Now, normally you would leave just a, you know, like a six inch, five, six inch space open where you could just stuff anything that you're going to, you know, you're going to, your pillow filling inside. But if you have already a, a pillow form, <coughs> excuse me, or a cushion like this, you obviously can't push it into that little hole. So I'm going to leave this whole side open. So I'm only going to sew up the side across the top and then down this side. I don't know if you can see the whole thing because I've got my uh, camera on this whole new tripod thing. And part it's covering part of the bottom, so I don't know what you're seeing. So that's why I'm moving it around and making sure. Anyway, this is going to be the one for this pillow. <coughs> and then I've got the other ready for the other pillow. But before I get to sewing them, I'm going to pin them. And uh, normally, uh, a little project like this, I don't really pin it, but I'm going to go ahead and pin it uh, just for the uh, sake of the video because uh, if, you're, if you're learning how to sew, this is the perfect project for you. But So therefore, you should pin everything. And just pin it a lot more than what I'm doing. I'm pinning it in the corners and I'm pinning it in the middle, but really, you should also pin somewhere between the quarter corner in the middle. So I'm doing that. I'm trying to give you cleavage here, sorry. Uh, and then we go a little bit here. And just pin it, pin it, pin it. Lots of pins. And what I do is I make sure that the pin, like the little pin head, instead of being, you know, on the outside, I make sure it's on the inside. Let me show you when it's dark so you can see. See my little pins? A little ball on the end or whatever may be on the end. I make sure it's on the inside of my where I'm going to sew rather than on the outer edge because I'm only doing a quarter inch in and I don't want that little ball to get in my way. <coughs> also it's easier to remove the uh, pins because um, I can just be removing them as I'm sewing before you know before the the sewing needle with well, the needle on the sewing machine you don't want it to go over it and mess up your needle so you're going to be removing them as you sew as you go along. And I'm a lefty-righty. I write with my right, but I'm very lefty. 
okay with a lot of other things. So I need my pens to be able to pull them out with my left hand. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'll show you what I'm doing. And then I'll go and sew the other one, pin and sew the other one. And then I will show you how I'm, I'm going to place them over the pillow and close that up. All right, so I've got my thread ready on my sewing machine. I made sure it was a thread that matched the either one of the fabrics as close as possible. Now it's going to be on the inside, so I'm not going to worry too much over it. <coughs> now remember this, I said I was going to leave one side open, and so I didn't pin this so I could I note to myself that that is the part side that I'm not going to. So, excuse me, I'm sick and I'm having a little trouble speaking. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to go in one quarter inch. Um, I've already measured this, my the uh, width of my foot. There's a little marking right in the center of my foot, and then um, that from that little marking all the way to the edge of my, the foot is ha uh, a quarter inch. Sorry, it's half an inch. Let me think. I can't even think. I'm so sick. Oh, my goodness. That's my quarter inch mark, yes. Okay. So that's what I want to sew. So I'm just going to keep my fabric at the edge of my uh, <coughs> foot here. So it all just depends on what you decide. There should be some measurements on the side of your, you know, and the little, there should be like a little grid on your sewing machine. Now, you see in my sewing machine, it has this longer arm than what you might use to be seen. That's just a little addition that's for quilting. Uh, but normally would have this little piece on there, so it would be a smaller uh, arm here. So there's nothing special, not, nothing different that I've done or that I'm using as a sewing machine. It's just this is it's a different arm on here. Um, but I like to use it, so I leave it on there. <coughs> Otherwise, you don't need to have this, okay? So if you're seeing that and you're wondering what the heck kind of a sewing machine are you using, it's just a regular. This is a brother sewing machine. Um, nothing special. It just has that little features for quilting. Okay. Backstitch. And I'm going to sew. I'm going to remove this little tag. It's really bugging me. Uh, I'm going to go sew all the way and then go around and then up, but I'm going to leave this part unsewn and I'll be back. Okay, um, for the sake of my opening being uh, <coughs> nice and you know, well done, I am going to do about an inch of the corners where the, I would normally leave the opening. And instead of doing a half inch, uh, I mean a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to do a half an inch. So I'm going to go in about an inch and just basically square off that that edge by sewing like that. Okay, so I've been sewing all along here and I would have stopped there, but I decided that I'm going to do a little a little corner just so when I put the pillow in, my little corner is, is uh, already measured and defined and I know where um, I should fold this to do the uh, a stitch. So I need to do the same thing on the other side because I didn't start off that way. So I'm just going to do that one inch of um, half an inch going in. <clears throat> okay, now I've just got to do the other one. Okay, well, I'm coming already here to the end. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm finishing up that, finishing up that second pillow. <coughs> and these pins were far away enough from the edge that I didn't have to remove them at the time that I was sewing because my needle wasn't even going over them. So they're still on here, so I'm just taking them off. Okay, now I'm just going to turn over my two pieces. Sorry. Okay, let me trim off. Where, where is it? Oh, so many little threads. Trimming them off. Okay. <clears throat> this is the open side. So I'm going to put my finger there in the little corner so then I'll know where to push in. And just push it out like that. Do the same with this other little corner. I'm putting my little finger in there with my other my thumb, just kind of pinching it, and then that way I can push it out. I've done that with these. Pull it through. 
get your hand in there so that you can get into the little corner and use your finger. Now you can use a little wooden dowel. There's actually a little tool for this to push out the little corner. Uh, there we go. And I just use my finger. I'm just doing little temporary little covers for those uh, pillows, so I don't need anything perfect. Okay, so there's my nice uh, kind of like a pillowcase, if you will. <clears throat> and as you can see, that on the open part, the corners. See, because I sewed them in, now I have these little. Uh, corners that'll match these corners and I have plenty of open space here where I can push the pillow that I've the cushions that I've already have already made through here and then just uh, then I'll just uh, fold the edges in and do a blind stitch and I'll show you how I do that so I'm going to take this other one turn it over the same way that I did this other one and I will meet you at the other table all right so we're back to uh, the table. <clears throat> I've got my two cushions. One of them is obviously smaller than the other one. And as I had mentioned before, um, I don't really care too much for these uh, pillows because they're a little bit worn and this we're going to just be a temporary cover. But because one ends up being smaller than the actual pillow because I didn't take into account that there could be a difference. You know, I actually didn't know what size pillow I was going to use to be honest. 16 inches seemed more than enough. I thought I'd do 15 and a half. Anyway, Aside from that, <coughs> this came out smaller than my actual pillows, and because I don't care too much for the pillows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll probably open up the other one and just use the uh, the filling to fill the smaller one up, but I'm going to try and get this whole pillow into this bigger one because I think that will work. Okay, so basically, since I had sewn these two little corners, my opening is obviously not as big or wide as the pillow, but what I'm doing is I'm just going to squeeze the pillow and get it in there, squeeze it and push it in. Okay, make sure my corners are in my corners. <laughs> I get the other corner in this corner. Okay, I've got it in there. You can see a little cushion here. <coughs> Okay, I was going to prepare a needle with some thread and I didn't do that, so I guess I'll just do that now. Just a uh, hand sewing a needle. Remove this thread off of it. Put in a nice, fresh string of thread. Yeah, I don't see as well as I used to. And this is going to be hard. Okay, let's just trim that because there's a little bit of a tiny little hair of the thread that's not letting me push it through. Okay, there's actually tools that help you do this. So <laughs> if you can't thread a needle, you should use those tools, but you know. Eh. And I'm just going to cut enough where I'm comfortable with. Um, every time I cut a, a string of thread that's way long enough to go through, it always gets all tangled up on me, so I don't want to do that anymore. So um, I'm just going to cut a a piece of thread that's long enough and I've knotted it at the end. You could just knot one one piece of the thread, but I do both because I want double string to go through. Now, <clears throat> to uh, blind stitch this, the best thing to do is, uh, is to pin this as you go along. Just fold in the edges and pin them together so that nothing moves on you. So let me do that. To the center here, pin that to that. <clears throat> I might grab a little bit of the cushion, but that's fine. That's my doggy. He's just barking because, or she is because she can. <laughs> There's actually the neighbor's dogs are barking, so I think she's barking because they're barking. <clears throat> All right, Freya. Okay, isn't it fun <laughs> to have a those nice little noises in the background. Okay, <laughs> so blind stitch is first of all, you're gonna bring in your needle from the inside out because you wanna hide that little knot that you have. You know, you want it to go underneath there, like so. And you're just gonna run your thread under 
the fabric where it, it's folded and then you're going to do the same by grabbing this one and then go back and grab this one again go under the fabric right at the fold pull it out grab your other fabric and you want to make sure you're grabbing the other fabric because because it's furry it's kind of like am I really grabbing it okay and then I grab that one again and I'm going to continue this little uh, stitch all the way down and then I'm going to do my other pillow and like I said I'm probably going to take the stuffing out of the the other cushion to put into it <coughs> The other cushion to put into it because it is smaller and or but I'm gonna try and stuff it in as it is maybe I'll just have a nice little really hard pillow since this little fabric has a little bit of a stretch but this side doesn't but I don't want to pull it too much that it pulls on the seam so I'm gonna try it if I see if it pulls too much I'm just gonna take the inside otherwise I do have another little pillow that I could put in there and this one I don't mind uh, you know breaking it open and just using the filling rather than breaking this one open because what if now nah, oh I'm thinking too much don't overthink it if you don't like the cushion just pop it open and use the filling all right well I'm just about finished uh, doing my uh, stitching on the second pillow what I decided to do was uh, gone ahead I've gone ahead and I've used the uh, stuffing from um, the white pillow that I showed you that had those little blue leaves on it basically this one I've taken that out <clears throat> this was an odd kind of a leftover cushion from I don't know what I think it was from a like a comforter set I had at one point anyway and I put it in my craft room because I thought it was pretty but anyway it was um, it didn't I don't know it was a little too fluffy but anyway these this other pillow I was gonna take it apart and take the inside but I decided that I really like the shape of the cushion so I didn't want to destroy the shape of the cushion to put it in this other one. Instead, I'm going to save this as is and then cover it with another fabric. I don't like the fabric. I mean, I do like the fabric that it has on there, but it's kind of worn. <coughs> and it doesn't really go with uh, the decor in the house in my living room. So I'm not, I haven't been using them. I just had them kind of sitting aside. So I decided, well, I'm going to cover them. Here's one already finished. As I showed, I think I showed you that it was already finished. Here's the second one. It's a little bit fluffier and I'm going to kind of maneuver the the uh, stuffing in there I'm just finishing off this last last little bit of this opening right here as you can see I just have a little tiny bit to do go ahead and do that <clears throat> just catching that was done my fingers hurt from holding the pillow like that <laughs> they just kind of hurt I don't know if it's because if it's cool cooling out outside yeah winter's coming well you know here in Texas winter is you know 50 degrees or something at the most so, well I think it's gonna get cool like cold cold we, we may get some freezes, but, you know, they're like temporary kind of freezes that just come by the night and then they're gone by the afternoon. It's super sunny the rest of the day. <clears throat> but sometimes a lot of those freezes do some damage. Um, anyway, I'm done with this pillow. Enough about the weather. Oops. Fluffing it up. Not fluffing it, but rather kind of pushing down and evening out the... Here I have a nice big square one and then I've got this smaller little fluffy one and I think they look really cute. I'm going to go put them on my couch so that you can see what they look like. Alright here we go. Here's the uh, cushions on the couch. I have a little blanket set up there in the little corner and I put them on the couch and they look really cute. I love them. Let me know what you think. Please subscribe to my channel. I want to say thank you to all the people who have been subscribing. Um, if you like what I do, please check out my other videos so that you can see the other things that I do. I do uh, recipes and craft ideas, so please subscribe. Okay, I just need a little bit more fixing of that little cushion, but that's okay. I think once we throw ourselves on it, 
it's going to get misshapen anyway. But that's the whole purpose. I wanted them for comfort. Uh, please subscribe, as I was saying. Please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you have uh, your own ideas and you'd like to put your link down at the bottom so that I can check out your videos, let me know. Let me know if you'd like me to sub to you. But please sub to me. <laughs> okay, so now I need another pillow for the other side. So maybe that's what I'm going to use the other cushion for. Do something different. A different fur and maybe just switch this little pillow over to that side. I don't know. We'll see. But this is it. As always, enjoy. Mm -hmm.